<laughs> Don't ever shush, Daddy. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Good morning. Our guest book that is in the parlor. This coming Saturday, February 3rd, is our pork and sauerkraut dinner. You may get tickets at the office. Uh, or if you want a group of tickets to sell to your friends and neighbors, please let me know. I'll give those to you. A sign is on the table in the parlor listing areas where help is needed, especially this Thursday evening at 6.30 to move and set up the tables and chairs. A sign-up sheet is also on the table if you will bake a cake. And a reminder that there is no Saturday worship service on the 3rd. Our congregational meeting will be held Sunday, February 25th, following the worship service. All committee reports for the bulletin of reports need to be in the church office by next Sunday, the 4th. Worship services on Saturday, February 10th, and Sunday, February 11th, will be noisy. That means bring your loose change for the soup pots that will be used for a special collection for the ELCA World Hunger Appeal. So gather your coins this week and help make our worship services very noisy. The next Casting Our Nets Ministry Group meeting is February 11th following the worship service. And there is still seven quarts of beef noodle, five quarts of Manhattan clam chowder, and two quarts of minestrone soup left from our soup sale yesterday. So don't knock each other over going down the steps to get your favorite. But after worship, you can uh, go down and purchase those uh, if you wish to. Also, if you did not pick up your pre-order at the sale yesterday, they are in the refrigerator downstairs to be picked up. Are there any other uh, announcements or prayer requests to come before us? Yes. This is actually a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, in past weeks, you heard me ask for prayers for Chloe, who is at Children's Hospital. She's 
She was released two weeks ago. The lungs are totally clear. Oh. And I'm sure the prayers of everyone here help make that happen. Thank you for everyone's prayers. Mm. Good news. Good news. Amen. Yes, back in the back row. He's in the hospital? Oh, okay. Yes. Marcy Chesluck, Marcy, a, a member of our church, her brother Glenn, we're asked to keep him in prison. He's in the hospital with COVID. Mm -hmm. Anything else? We'll just read about all the other events and information that's in the bulletin. And if there are no other announcements or prayer requests, please stand for our gathering hymn. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping across the waters. Let us humbly confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. If you're able, would you kneel, please? God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore 
us that we might proclaim your good works. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We are God's beloved. Amen. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion, that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the word. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will rise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Be Please join in reading the psalm. Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You 
The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and from whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all are all, all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers from whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Before I begin my sermon, I want to say a word of thanks to all the people who worked so hard to help with the soup sale 
and to make it a great success and for all of you who purchased it. And regarding the uh, pork and sauerkraut dinner coming up, you remember that that is rather ancient in this congregation. It goes back a long way. Um, most of you don't realize that at the very first pork and sauerkraut dinner here, three of the original apostles were here. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which ones. You have to figure that out. As Sandy and I were driving along the other day, and we passed the church. And outside there was a sign that caught my attention and uh, kind of has stuck in my craw ever since then. It's a sign that simply read, life is a puzzle. Come inside to find the missing piece. I hope that that's true for that congregation, that it's in there, the missing piece can be found, and I hope it's true for our congregation, that here at Christ Lutheran Church, people can come from the puzzling nature of their lives and find the missing piece. And I would submit to you that the missing piece that is found here is none other than that one who stood in the synagogue in Capernaum early in his ministry. Some of us from this congregation stood with Sandy and me inside that synagogue in Capernaum many years ago. Now, the original one was down below in the ground somewhere, but we stood on the very same location that Jesus stood that day and taught, and not just taught, but taught with authority. The whole Gospel of Mark is all about pointing out the authority of Jesus Christ and who he was. It was a natural thing. Each community had a synagogue, and in it was not like the temple, a place of sacrifice and priestly duties, but a place where people would come each week and pray, hear the scriptures read, and someone then would expose upon the scriptures. But whoever those people were, whether they be scribes or perhaps a rabbi, would normally, when they preached, preach basically other teachings from scripture, or they would regurgitate the teachings of other rabbis, but not Jesus. Jesus speaks on his own, and he speaks for God as though he knew God close to close. He spoke with an authority that they were astonished by. He spoke, and when he spoke, the power of his word was made known. It was sort of a... sort of a tell and show day at Capernaum. Because not only did he then tell them about the kingdom of heaven that has broken into the world in his very person and the authority and power of God that rested in him, but then he had an opportunity right away to show that power with that man who with an unclean spirit cried out, it was believed in the day of Jesus that there were demons everywhere and that illness was certainly a source and a evidence of those demons. He cries out with a loud voice, and what does he cry out? But he cries out to this one Jesus of Nazareth and says to him, what have you to do with us? He recognizes this one with authority. When all the rest have no idea what is happening with him, the demons recognize him in the Gospel of Mark. And they say to him, did you come to destroy us? And the answer to the question is, you bet I did. I came to destroy you and all the forces of evil that would defy my father's kingdom. And they said, we know that you are the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebukes them in their confession. In Mark, there's this interesting technique called the Messianic secret. And whenever someone recognizes Jesus or claims him to be the Son of God, he is rebuked by Jesus. 
For Mark, the Messiahship doesn't really become fulfilled until later in the gospel when Jesus dies on the cross and then he puts into the words of the centurion, truly this man was the son of God. For Jesus to be Messiah, to truly be the Holy One of God, it required his death on the cross when all the powers of evil would be broken once and for all. Do you believe in the power of evil? Do you believe in devils and demons? Do you believe that they exist and that they are all around you and within you? Well, I'll tell you what. Whether you believe or not makes no difference. They're there. C.S. Lewis once wrote these words. He said, enemy-occupied territory. That is what this world is. And Christianity is the story of how the rightful king has landed. And you might say landed in disguise and is calling us all to take part in a great campaign of sabotage. That when you go to church, you're really listening in to the secret wireless from our friends. That is why the enemy is so anxious to prevent us from going. He does it by playing on our conceit and laziness and intellectual snobbery. And I know some will ask me, do you really mean this time of day to reinduce the old friend, the devil? Hoofs and horns and all. And he said, well, the time of the day has to do with it I do not know. But I am not particularly concerned about hoofs and horns. But in other respects, my answer is yes, I do. I do not claim to know anything about his personal experience, appearance. But if anyone really wants to know him better, I would say to that person, don't worry. If you really want to, you will. Whether you'll like it or not when you do is another question. I think the puzzle of our lives has to do with the fact that we have been more in league with those forces that defy God than with those that are on his side. I think sometimes it is so true that we expect God to serve our purposes when what we are called to do is to serve God's purposes. One is of evil. The other is of God. In whom do we put our trust? Who do we believe has the authority that can fill our lives with love, fill our lives with peace and joy, drive out those demons that are real within us, racism, unkindness, uncivility, can help us when we attach to other human forms in this world. Status of idols, people who we give authority to, but who are really only authoritarian and really do not have the authority and our best, our well-being at heart. I think the missing piece is right here. It's in this wine. It's in this bread. This is the missing piece that can put our lives into some sense of order. This is the one who has power over all the demons. In a little while, Noah is going to be baptized up here. And I'm going to ask his parents on his behalf and ask you as the congregation as well as myself to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, confess the faith of the church, and then the renunciation of evil. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? And we should answer boldly, with the help of God, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? And we should answer with the grace of God behind us, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Jesus is the one who gives us the strength to overcome the demons of our lives. And you have them. 
and I have them. And we all have them together, even we as Christians. Sometimes I look upon the church in the world today and say, sometimes it almost seems as if there are Christians in league with the devil. Not campaigning to sabotage its work. We all must be careful. And we all come here and get on our knees and confess to God that we are not whole without him. That the puzzle of our lives is not complete if he's not in the center. Noah will have to contend in his life against the powers of evil. He has yet to discover that. And the powers of evil are not to be messed with. But the power of God and the authority of Jesus Christ far outweighs them all. This man who died on the cross, who is rightly, yes, the Holy One of God, those demons were right in recognizing him, and now we are right in recognizing him too. He is our champion. He is the power within us, as if he will have his power within Noah, beginning this day, when his Holy Spirit will fill his life. And that Holy Spirit will be a spirit of grace and love and might. Are the pieces of your life in turmoil? Is your life puzzling? I hope that you might find the missing piece that makes the picture complete. I hope you and I might find him again today in bread and wine and in his word. We might find it throughout this week and that we might proclaim him to a world out there in need of his love. But most of all, I pray not so much that we would find Jesus, but that by his grace every day, he would find us. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand and let's sing about that balm that soothes our sin-sick soul in the balm of Gilead. Please stand.
may be seated, and I invite uh, Bethany and Jason to bring forward uh, Noah and anyone else who cares to be up here with us. You're all, as many are welcome. This, of course, is the most important thing that will ever happen in Noah's life as he becomes a child of God, an heir to the kingdom of heaven, and the Holy Spirit that will help him to contend upon all those things will be with him. Good morning, Noah. How are you, big guy? Hi. That thumb tastes good? Beautiful. The right for holy baptism is in our bulletin today. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and join in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, I ask you, do you desire to have Noah baptized into Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. As you bring Noah to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with the responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that Noah may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Knowing these are promises that you are making this day in the very presence of God, but also knowing that God and God's church will be here to help you keep them. I ask you, do you promise to help Noah grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, respond, I do. I do. I I ask you and I ask all of us to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of God who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by the Holy Spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that Noah here baptized and all who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Jason, may I have him? How should this child be named? Noah Patrick Urechich. Noah Patrick Urechich. I now, with joy and on behalf of the whole church, baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, <laughs> And in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the evil spirits convulsed and came out of him. <laughs> Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Noah with the gift of your holy baptism, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Noah, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Noah, let your light so shine before others that, let's get this right, that they may see your good works and through you glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and prayers to God and bearing God's created and redeemed word to all the world. Blessed be with you. God be with you always, Noah. Let's thank God for this great event. Could we? You can blow it in that one. I'll give it back to you. Just a minute here. I'm going to give you all this stuff. Is that with you? You may go to your seat. I would remind you all that you have this day witnessed a miracle, the miracle of God's love in our lives and, and in his holy church in the world, of which now Noah becomes uh, a part. Tom? If you're able, please stand for the prayers. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers teach honor and instruction and model your inclusive ways, God of grace. Receive our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all creation, that waterways flow clean and clear, natural spaces are protected, and our planet is healed. Let us commit to thoughtful care of the earth, God of grace. Receive our prayer. 
justice seeking God. We pray for those in government and community leadership that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. God of grace, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need, especially those who have known rejection, any who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and any who suffer. Especially we pray for all those on our prayer list and others we name in our hearts. Be with Glenn, O Lord, bring him healing. God of grace, receive our prayer. Still speaking, God, we pray for our congregation, for its artists and musicians, for its educators and caregivers, that all gifts are used to care for those in need and to live out your example of accompaniment, a gospel witness and love. God of grace, receive our prayer. Eternal God, we remember all of those who have been teachers, mentors, and companions in the church and in our lives. We trust that all who have died rest in your loving care. God of grace, receive our prayer. For peace in the Middle East and Ukraine, for the people who suffer from the ravages of war, we ask that you would bring peace and healing, O Lord. God of grace, be with Noah, help him to know your love for him all the days of his life. Help his parents to be able to keep their promises they made to you by your help and by your grace and with the help of the church this day. Help him to be raised, be raised strong in the faith and to come to know the champion that you are in his life, O Lord. God of grace, Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of the Holy One of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace. Share it as you feel comfortable. Peace, everybody. Peace. Of You may be seated as we prepare to receive our offering for the day. Thank you. 
Please stand. Thanksgiving for our offerings, let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, and we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Are you, O holy God? You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave it all, all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again. We await that day with all the universe. We'll rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come, find the missing piece of the puzzle of your life. Come and see.
you're able, would you please stand? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. every gift. Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. God who names us, Christ who claims us, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, bless us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. We don't have a thousand tongues here, but Let's sing as if we do. Hymn 886.